Okay. So, where we're at right now is we uh, talked a little bit about ping. We talked a little bit about the protocol. It's not TCP. It's not UDP. It's another one, ICMP. And it's important to know all that because I'm trying to test TCP. I can't use ping. If I want to test UDP, I can't use ping. And not only that, but when you send data on a real network with a real piece of software, it's not a little tiny thing. It's usually data, right? So it's important to understand those subtle differences so you can make these changes. Now let's talk a little bit about the real world. You go back home tonight, you got a PC, uh, maybe two PCs on your network, you and your wife, you and your, your kids, whatever. This is a really neat exercise to do because what you can do is ping something. Ping your wireless router, ping something. And what you'll find out is based on the coverage of your wireless network at home, your ping times are going to change or you might drop stuff. So you go to the living room, you drop 20% of your pings. You go to the kitchen, don't drop anything. You go to the rec room, you drop 40%. And that explains a lot. Then you start saying, wow, I'm dropping a lot of stuff. Why? It could be because of noise. It could be interference. It, who, it doesn't matter. The point is, this is what I got. Okay? And I tell people, this is like the mileage, the real mileage that you get. Okay? This has got nothing to do with anything else. The reason why is almost irrelevant right now. Okay? So even when you do a network install or a test, ping something. But if you're going to ping something, please load it up a bit. Right? Put a little something in there. Don't just leave it alone. For the people who don't know what you can do with ping, if you just type ping and you press enter, it shows you all the stuff you can do. And there's a lot of options in there. Okay. So, for example, some of the more common options, just so you know what I do, you don't have to do this, but just so you know what I do, one of the things that I do, if you haven't caught on yet, is that dash L, which means length, by the way, the length of the data. Okay. The other one I like to do is number of pings. So I don't want three, I don't want four, I might want to send a hundred of these things. So then I could just do a dash N for number and put a hundred. And now it's going to ping a hundred times and I can walk away and it's pinging. Now just so you know, Microsoft, we're using the Microsoft ping here, it defaults to one per second. So if I send a hundred of them, it's a hundred seconds. See how long these things are going to take, right? So if I did a 500, that's 500 seconds. So you, you want to keep an idea of how long this is going to take, because if I'm sending a ping up and then I'm going to walk over and do something in the other room, I've got to know how long this is going to take, right? Right? In some cases, you might want to ping more often, every half a second, every 10 milliseconds. Unfortunately, you cannot do that with Microsoft. Oh, no, I'm cool, thanks. Jeez, I feel like I'm at my parents' house. Hey, Munch, hey, you hungry? <laughs> and then you know, you know what comes next? You want a cookie? No. Why? You don't like them? What's the matter with you? <laughs> so it's important to understand why we have these switches, right? Dash L, length for load, right, or length, okay? Dash N, how many pings do you want to send? That's another good one to use, right? Let's take a look at what we got when it's finished. What is it telling us when it's finished? Because I stopped this kind of, I canceled it prematurely just because I don't want to wait that long. It's telling me how many I sent, how many I received, and then it tells you how many you've lost. And that's really important. So let, me, let me give you a quick example. Right now we're in this building. So you're upstairs on the fourth floor, you go down to the first floor, and you guys ping each other. Okay? Are you expecting any loss in this building from the fourth floor to the first floor? No? Why not? I don't know. Pardon? Okay. Okay, well, okay, let's, let, let's, do, let's do our baseline in this room. Same switch, two guys. You're expecting to drop a packet. So you're going to get 100%, right? Okay, you're going to lose zero. I agree. Now let's spread this out. You stay upstairs, you go downstairs. Are you expecting any drops? No? Maybe? Some? I don't know. I don't <laughs> I'm going to give you a t-shirt. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe possibly? No? Okay. So, let's talk about this. What would cause a packet not to make it? What would cause a lost 
packet. Let's just talk about that for a minute. Since we all agree on that, then you guys can probably figure out the answer, okay? Okay, so let's talk about the most common answers. So the first one, and the three just went out, so I told I'll undo this one and we'll do the other two. The first one was distance, you just said, correct? Okay, so let's assume uh, fourth floor to fifth floor is further, obviously, than here, okay? So distance. Would that cause a dropped packet? It all depends on how long this would take to time out. But in most cases, you got lots of time. You could ping Singapore and make it back. So time, but you're right, it could be a factor, but not so much here. Awesome. What were some of the other answers? Bad cable. Bad cable, okay. So bad cable is a really good one, because yeah, if I got a bad cable, it's not gonna work. Let's assume cables, yeah, let's assume the cable's good. All right? So if the cable's good upstairs, cable's good downstairs, and the cables are good between them, are you expecting a dropped packet? No. No? What if the cable runs with some closed machinery or runs in the Again, that's a problem. We're going to assume there's no problem. The world is perfect. Yeah, what are you doing trying to make life difficult for? So, <laughs> no, you probably shouldn't get any back. You shouldn't get any drop packets locally. Okay? Now let's assume that the other building has a piece of fiber between it. And you got another switch and another computer in there. And you ping a hundred times. Are you expecting any dropped packets there? We got a yes? We got a no? And again, there's, everything's working fine. Please don't think there's something wrong with something. Everything being good and equal, good cable, good switch and all that nonsense. What do you think? Yes or no? Right. Probably not. Now let's change it again. We got two buildings, but this time we have a Dragon Wave wireless system, or two, four, 900 megahertz, whatever, and you ping it. Are you expecting some lost packets? Why, why did everybody immediately say yes like that? What's going on? Because you did the class? Yeah. <laughs> why? More susceptible to noise and interference? Excellent. What else? What else? I'm sorry? Thank you. Excellent. The quality of the connection? Yep. The weather that day. Yep. The weather that day, yeah. Alignment issues, wind, right? All sorts of good things, right? The point, though, is that wireless is not as stable as a piece of copper or a piece of... We all know that. Even in your house, if you try to watch a movie off your wireless router, that's a different experience than if you just plugged in. Do you understand? We all know that. Or if the kids are gaming, right? World of Warcraft, whatever they're doing now, right? That's different if they're plugged in versus wirelessly. If you're talking on Skype, you're doing a video conference call or a Vonage or whatever, same thing. This is very important to understand. If you don't know the topology you're traversing, if you don't know the type of network you're crossing, you won't know why you got the certain types of answers you got on the board. Okay? Okay? And, and putting load or that dash L is critical when you test things like wireless networks. Critical. Because that really shows you totally different answers than if you have a big packet versus a small packet. Okay?